it's frog breeding season once again. So in today's video, I'm going to collect some frog spawn from a local pond, take it home and set up an aquarium ready to look after them for the next few months. And I'm going to show you how to do it every step of the way. Welcome to Frog Watch 2022. This is the European common frog at Vinegar Pond in Norwich. This pond is an incredibly important breeding site for frogs and is the site of thousands of frogs born every year. The frog's breeding season can depend on location and weather conditions. Here in Norwich on the east of England, late February to early March is most common, but this is not the case everywhere. Take a look at this map created by Ponddip on Twitter. It records spawn sightings across England, Ireland and Scotland. You can clearly see the trend. Spawn appears in the southwest first as early as the 31st of December, and over time sightings gradually move north and east. The date of the frog spawning can also change from year to year due to weather conditions. This year the spawn has arrived a few weeks earlier than last year. Last year we had a particularly late spring and the colder temperatures slowed down the frog's arrival, but this year they've arrived at a more typical time. A single female frog can lay up to a thousand eggs, which will be fertilised as she lays them by a male who has gripped onto the female's back in a position known as amplexus. Well now it's time to collect some spawn for myself to take home. In the UK this is perfectly legal, however the sale of spawn is not, so please do not be tempted to buy or sell spawn. As long as you return the tadpoles or frogs back to the same pond you got them from, it could be a great hobby. As I got to the pond's edge, I noticed a clump of spawn had been laying on the ground, just above the waterline. Unless there is a large amount of rain in the next day or two, these are almost certainly going to dry out and die, so they seem the perfect candidates for the tadpoles of this year's video series. So with a jar of spawn collected, it's time to head home and place them in their new home for the next six months. So here's my tank, it's already set up, ready to go. Now I've had the jar of frog spawn floating in the tank for a couple of hours. Now I do that just to make sure that the temperature of the spawn inside the jar is the same as the temperature of the water, so there's no shock when I add them to the water. So it's now time to put the spawn into the tank. But before I do that, I just want to show you how to set up one of these tanks for yourself, if this is something you want to do as well, to follow along with this series, which I hope you do. So here's a clip that I made a while ago to show you how to set up one of these tanks. Setting up a tadpole tank is really easy and doesn't require much to get started. You'll need a fish tank of any size. The bigger it is, the more tadpoles you can comfortably keep, but a small tank will do just fine for smaller amount of tadpoles. I use white aquarium gravel, but you can use any type of aquarium substrate. Gravel, sand, aquatic soil, or even nothing at all. The reason I use white gravel is it just makes it nice and easy to see the tadpoles, especially since I'm filming it. The gravel is usually covered in dust, so the first thing to do is to rinse it under running water. This prevents the water from becoming cloudy. Once the gravel is thoroughly cleaned, I add a few centimetres to the bottom of the tank. Then I fill the tank with water. You do need to be careful with the water quality. It's best to use natural sources of water, such as rainwater, but tap water can be used if you do one of two things. Either treat it with something like tap safe, like I do here, or leave the water to stand for several days, at least three, longer if you can, to make sure all the chlorine has been removed. Chlorine will kill tadpoles. Here I treat the tap water and leave it for about three days before adding in the spawn, just to be sure. Now I add in the plants. I often get asked what kind of plants to use and where to get them from. I just get my plants from the local pet store. Any pet store that sells fish or fish accessories should have a section where they sell aquarium plants. Any plants that are suitable for cold water fish will be suitable for tadpoles. People also ask me if they can use plastic plants. I'm sure you can as decoration, but since we won't be using a filter, we need live plants to help oxygenate and clean the water. Plants are more than just decoration, they also serve a function. They help remove nitrogen from the water and keep it clean and clear for longer, so they're vital for the health of the tank. So why don't I use a filter? I often get asked if filters can be used, but no, don't use a filter. Tadpoles are actually poor swimmers and will get sucked into filter systems. Even if they don't get sucked into the filter, forcing them to swim against the current created by filters can exhaust them. All in all, filters are a really bad idea for tadpoles. 
If you struggle to keep your water clean, just add more plants or change your water more often. We'll get into that in a later video. One other thing I do is to add in some broken up pieces of cuttlefish bone. Just drop in a few pieces in the tank. Once again, this can be bought from most pet stores. It's the kind of thing you give to budgies to chew on. This is a good source of calcium, something that can be missing from aquarium setups. The last thing to think about is the position of the tank. Make sure it gets some natural sunlight as this is needed for proper development in tadpoles. A lack of sunlight can lead to deformities as they grow. If you don't think your tank will get enough sunlight, you may need to add a UV bulb like I'm doing here. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. All you need to do next is to add your spawn or tadpoles. You may notice my tank for this year looks a little different from the one I was just setting up. I like to try something different occasionally, so this year I'm trying some aquarium soil for the first time. The tank setup has a couple of different steps. Instead of gravel, I add the soil. No need for rinsing. I add a small amount of water, then instead of adding the plants in their pots, I gently expose their roots and separate out the individual stems. Using a pair of forceps, I gently push their roots into the soil. Then it was just a case of adding a bit of aquarium gravel to add a top layer and fill the tank with water. This is water I've had standing for a full seven days, so I don't feel the need to treat it with tap safe this time. So with my tank set up, the spawn is ready to go in. And with that, we've come to the end of the first episode of Frogwatch 2022, and I think we're off to a great start. So I do hope you'll come back next time to see how the spawn has developed. And of course, if you are following along with this series, if you're looking after your own tadpoles, your own spawn, please do let me know in the comment section how it's going. I really do love hearing all about your own journeys along your own Frogwatch. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.